Hold on one second, Mr. Chair. Okay. You're good. All right, I'll call the meeting to order. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Joint Committee on Fair Practices and State Personnel Oversight. I am Delegate Eric Barron. I'm joined by my co-chair, Senator Clarence Lamb. Today, we are continuing our review and investigation of the Maryland Environmental Service Personnel and Board Practices. Now, since our last meeting, the co-chairs, along with Delegate Mark Corman and Senator Jill Carter, presented our initial findings to the Legislative Policy Committee. We outlined to the policy committee the facts surrounding pressure on the MES board to approve of an unusual and large cash payment and expense reimbursements to Mr. Roy McGrath, the director of MES, on his way out the door to be the governor's chief of staff. We also presented a sampling of the various troubling expenses and travel of the former director and his close aide, Matthew Shering. And our presentation also included evidence of a toxic and demoralizing work environment at the agency stemming from its leadership. But we also described to the policy committee some important questions remain, including what the governor knew about this so-called severance. Mr. McGrath and the governor have made a variety of statements to the media and others about what the governor knew and whether he approved of this. Both men can't be true. Both men can't be right, and we need to hear from Mr. McGrath. Also, there are many unanswered questions surrounding what appear to be extravagant and unnecessary expense reimbursements by Mr. McGrath and his close associate, Mr. Shering. If the Joint Committee is to complete its work, we have to hear from Mr. Shering and Mr. McGrath. Now, after the Joint Committee presentation, the Policy Committee voted unanimously to authorize the issuance of subpoenas for the continuance of the investigation. We then engaged independent counsel, Mr. Ward Coe, to assist the Joint Committee with its work. I am hopeful that we can learn more details from Mr. Sharing today about who is telling the truth about who knew of and approved Mr. McGrath's so-called severance package, and more information about what appear to be pervasive and extravagant expenses and travel. These issues touch on much broader questions about the appointments process generally and oversight of state agencies by the executive branch. Thank you. Mr. Co-Chair. Thank you, uh, Chairperson Barron, I appreciate that. And um, I just wanna echo the remarks of my co-chair. I think this is a matter that we take very seriously. Um, it is not an action that we undertake lightly. There are a lot of outstanding questions when it comes to the severance, um, particularly because it uh, conveys matters of taxpayers' funds, accountability, misleading information, differing accounts, and, uh, potential malfeasance. These are all very grave, obviously. There's been significant discrepancy between what the governor has contended and what Mr. McGrath has conveyed to the MES board and what he's been saying to the press. One account is true, the other is not. Because of the seriousness of this matter, the Legislative Policy Committee met uh, several weeks ago and voted unanimously, unanimously to issue these subpoenas. And I think that speaks to the graveness of the concerns that this body has, that this was a bipartisan unanimous vote. And so I urge you to cooperate with this to the extent that's possible and urge you to be truthful because the truth will eventually come to light. And as we've seen with many other instances, the cover-up can oftentimes be worse than the transgressions. And so I urge you to be forthcoming to this committee um, and we will continue our effort to get at the truth. With that, um, let me turn it over to uh, Chairperson Barron. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think we're ready uh, for uh, counsel, Mr. Coe. Good afternoon. Uh, 
co-chairs, uh, Senator Lamb and Delegate Barron, and members of the committee. I'm Ward Coe of the law firm of Gallagher, Avelius and Jones. Uh, as the co-chairs have stated, the Legislative Policy Committee voted on September 23rd, 2020 to require Mr. McGrath and Mr. Sharing to appear before the Joint Committee on Fair Practices and State Personnel Oversight on mutually agreed dates pursuant to its review of the operation of the Maryland Environmental Service. Both had not appeared voluntarily in response to invitations from the Joint Committee. Mr. Sharing has been up here, has been subpoenaed and is here today by Zoom with his attorney, David B. Irwin, Esquire of the law firm of Cramon and Graham. Mr. Sharing and Mr. Irwin, I understand, are both in Mr. Irwin's offices in Towson, uh, connected by Zoom. I will ask the court reporter to have Mr. Sharing sworn as a witness, and then I will ask him questions. He was he was employed by MES from February of 2017 to August of 2020. I will show him a number of documents which will be shown to the committee by screen sharing, and the documents will be identified by exhibit number. As I understand the procedure, the uh, committee co-chairs will, and members of the joint committee will then have an opportunity to question the witness if you wish to have an exhibit displayed during your questioning, we will bring it up for you. And if you will just refer to the exhibit number. With that, I believe we are ready to proceed with the testimony. And I ask uh, Madam Court Reporter to please swear in the witness, Matthew Sharing. You're on mute. Madam Co Reporter, you're on mute. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in this matter be it the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Sharing. Will you state your name for the record, please? Good afternoon, Mr. Co. Matthew Sharing. And is your address? 2125 14th Street Northwest, Washington, D.C., 20009. Yes, it is. And that was your residence address during your employment at MES. Is that correct? Yes. Do you have any other residence addresses? Do not. Okay. Um, can you tell the committee your cell phone number, please? 202-527-3877. Is that the cell phone number that you had while you worked for MES? Yes. Do you have any other cell phone or iPhone numbers? Not currently. Did you while you worked at MES? Yes. yes. Could you give the committee those cell phone or iPhone numbers, please? I believe it was 443-618-4875. Mr. Co, Mr. Sharing, I'm sorry to interrupt. We're getting a significant amount of feedback. I think it's because the speaker and Mr. Irwin's computer is generating that feedback. Yes. I'm going to turn my volume down, which might help out for the court reporter. Since my wife's a court reporter, I'll try to help you as much as I can, Ms. Clark. Uh, who was the carrier for that uh, cell phone, Mr. Sharing? Verizon. Do you also have a landline phone number? I personally do not. Do you have an email address? A personal one? Yes. Yes. What is that? Uh, Matthew.sharing at gmail.com. Did you have that while you worked at MES? Yes. Do you have any other uh, email addresses? Yes. I, I did not hear your answer. I'm sorry. 
Yes. Could you give those to the uh, committee, please? Uh, Matt Sharing at yahoo.com. Is that it? That I can remember, yes. Uh, did you have that at MES? I had it during my time at MES, correct. Okay. Do you have a Facebook account? I do. And uh, under what name is your Facebook account? I believe it's Matthew Sharing. Okay. Do you have a profile on the account? Uh, again, a normal profile, I guess, if that's your question, yes. Is it a public account? I don't know the difference between the two, to be quite honest. Um, do you have a Twitter account? No. Do you have an Instagram account? No. Did you have either a Twitter or Instagram account while you worked for MES? No. No. Um, your LinkedIn page uh, is Exhibit 1. And we're going to bring that up for you for the committee. understand that you're a graduate of Skidmore College, class of 2002, is that right? Correct. And you received a BS in business management and marketing? Correct. And your LinkedIn page shows that your first job after college was with Union Privilege from 2000, yes. April 2005 to September 2006, September 2005? Yes. And that's uh, an AFL CIO entity, is that correct? Yes. And uh, you worked in communications for them? I did. Okay, and uh, what did you do from graduation in 2002 until your union privilege job? I spent a couple of years in the restaurant industry. Where was that? Uh, in New Jersey. Uh, your LinkedIn page shows that you went to work for the Food Marketing Institute in uh, June of 2006. Is that correct? September of 2005. Um, and what did you do for them? I was a coordinator of exhibits. And they are a, uh, an entity that does uh, lobbying, correct? That's one of the things they do, correct. Okay. Um, you did tele telemarketing and sold exhibit space, is that right? Correct. And why did you leave uh, FMI? Uh, I joined another organization. It was a growth opportunity. Okay. And that was NACDS? Yes. The National Ch Association of Chain Drug Stores? Uh, yes. Okay, and you worked for them from July of 2007 until April of 2014, is that right? Uh, yes, I did. And you worked on member programs and services, correct? Yes. That's also an organization that does lobbying, correct? Uh, that's one of the things they do, yes. Did you, did you know Roy McGrath before you went to work at NACDS? Uh, yes. Uh, when did you first meet him? Uh, when I began at NECDS. Well, I thought you understood that you, I thought I understood you to say that you knew him before you went there. Is that correct? Uh, no, I, I not, not until NECDS that I know Mr. McGrath. How did you meet Mr. McGrath? Uh, we were colleagues at NECDS. Did you work together? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, what was his position at the time he joined NACDS? Okay. Uh, could you repeat the question, please? What was his position when you joined NACDS? Um, I think it was director of, I, I don't know the rest of it. It was director of registration and exhibits, something like that. 
Did you report to him? Uh, no. Did you ever report to him during your tenure at NACDS? I did. And when was that? I don't know the exact times. It was at some point during my tenure there. For how long? I, I just don't recall the exact timing. I think it, you know, it could have been a few years. Okay. Uh, did you develop a friendship with Mr. McGrath while you were at NACDS? I did. Okay. Uh, would you socialize together? I, I would, yes. Okay. Uh, how frequently? Uh, during, you know, business uh, act events and things like that. Did you also get to know Michael Harris at NACDS? Not at NACDS. Um, did you know Vishal Batea at NECDS? Yes. How did you know him? Uh, we were colleagues at NECDS. And Vishal Batea was also hired by Mr. McGrath to work at MES, correct? I believe so, yes. Did you know Dan Farrow at NACDS? I did. Did you work with him? Uh, we did. And he was also hired by Mr. McGrath at MES, correct? Uh, yes. If you know. Uh, if you did know. you know uh, Craig Renner at NACDS? I did not. Um, NACDS uh, would have a presence at the ICSC meetings, correct? I don't recall. Well, you know that the ICSC is the International Council of Shopping Centers, correct? I do. And they hold an annual event in Las Vegas every year? I'm aware. Did you attend those events when you were at uh, NACDS? Uh, no. Did Mr. McGrath? I, I don't know. Um, why did you leave NACDS in April of 2014? Well, I felt like there was not an opportunity to, 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 to develop there, so I decided to leave the organization. Um, in 2014, there was a gubernatorial election in Maryland. Were you aware of that? Yes. Uh, did you know Governor Hogan at that time? No. Did you know that Mr. McGrath knew Governor Hogan? I did. Okay. And what did Mr. McGrath tell you about his relationship with Governor Hogan? Okay, hold on a second. This is, uh, Can you repeat the question, please? What did Mr. McGrath tell you about his relationship with Governor Hogan? Uh, because there are ongoing multi-agency investigations in this manner, it is with regret that I am unable to answer your and the committee's questions at this time. On the advice of my attorney, I am invoking my rights under the Maryland Declaration of Rights and the United States Constitution and respectfully decline this time to answer the question because a truthful answer might tend to incriminate me. Okay. Um. Did Mr. McGrath uh, inform you that he had a long-standing relationship with, Ms. with Governor Hogan? And I'm talking about 2014, when the gubernatorial election was going on. On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional, constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer the question. Okay. Did you do any work on the Hogan campaign in 2014? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Did you make uh, any financial contributions to the Hogan campaign in 2014? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Okay. Uh, Mr. Sharing, going back to your um, LinkedIn page, 
which is exhibit one, he went to work for sharing energy consultants from June 14th to July of, I'm sorry, June 2014 to July of 2015. Is that right? That's correct. And is that your father's company? That's correct. Okay. What did you do there? I was a solar energy consultant. Okay. Um, and you left in July of 2015 to become special assistant uh, to the deputy director at the Maryland Department of Housing and Community Direct Development, correct? That's correct. Who were you the special assistant to? Uh, a gentleman who was the deputy director of multifamily housing. Who was that? Oh, the name of the person? Yes. Uh, Mr. John Manable. And did Mr. McGrath inform you about that job? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Uh, did you know Mr. Hannibal before you applied for that job? I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Manable? Yes. Uh, no. Um, what were your duties as special assistant? I had a variety of uh, duties, including um, working on the Neighborhood Business Works Program. Was the special assistant job a job that was created for you? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Um, <clears throat> you were aware, weren't you, that uh, Mr. McGrath was named by Governor Hogan as the director of MES in December of 2000. Um, 16. I'm on the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights. I respectfully decline to answer that question. I'm showing you exhibit two, which is a public announcement of Governor Hogan appointing Mr. McGrath as director of the Maryland Environmental Service. Did you see that announcement when it came out? I, I don't, I don't recall. Uh, you were aware that Mr. McGrath was- I'm sorry, wait a minute. This, this is the court reporter. I got kicked out a while back. I don't know how I got kicked out, but I got kicked out a while back. The last question that I got said, did you do any work on the Hogan campaign in 2014? Okay. That was thank you for Thank you for telling us that. Is I'm there just gonna a that I can call into? Because I'm not sure why I got kicked out. Ms. Clark, we can give you a number. We can also give you a link to uh, the YouTube uh, stream for this. There's a YouTube stream? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I can get it off there if that's okay with you. I have a question about McGrath. Just take that. Anything that's the last name from now on? Okay. Um, Thank you, Ms. Clark, for telling us where we where we dropped off. The yeah, same okay. thing happened to me in a three day federal court case in June. Yeah, I don't know what happened. That's never happened to me before. It's it's the new world we live in. That's all. I can yes. Say. Sorry about that. That's OK. So, Mr. Mr. Sharing, I'm going to go back to where we left off and just go through the questions again very quickly. I, uh, we all heard your answers, but we have to get them recorded. Um, I, I asked you if you worked on the campaign in 2014 for Governor Hogan. On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. I also asked you if you were aware that Mr. McGrath worked on the campaign. On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. OK. 
Okay, and I asked you if you contributed to the Hogan campaign in 2014. On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Then I asked you if you worked for sharing energy consultants in 2014, 2015. Yes, I did. And your father owns that company, is that correct? Yes. And you worked as a consultant for him? Yes. And you left in uh, July of 2015 to become special assistant to the deputy director of uh, Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development, correct? Yes. And who was that deputy director? Uh, Mr. John Manival. Okay. Did uh, Mr. McGrath inform you about that job? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. And what were your job duties as special assistant? I had a variety of duties, uh, including uh, working on the neighborhood with business works program. Was that a job, was a special assistant job, a job that was created for you? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the client answer that question. Um, next, I asked you if you were aware that Governor Hogan announced that Mr. McGrath was going to be appointed director of the Maryland Environmental Service in December of 2015. On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. And then I, we showed you exhibit two, and I asked you if you saw that announcement. I believe you said you did not recall. That's correct, I did not recall. Um, when did you first communicate with Mr. McGrath about coming to work at MES? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Okay, I'm gonna show you exhibit three, which is a series of emails. Um, the first one starts with an exchange between you and Beth Voiden. She was employed by MES in January of 2017, correct? Yes, I, I know. On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the decline to answer that question. Okay. Um, your email of January 14th, 2017 to Ms. Voiton. Thanks her uh, for meeting with you the previous day. You did meet with Ms. Voiton on January 13th, 2017, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the decline to answer that question. Um, you, you knew that uh, Mr. McGrath was promoting you for a position at MES with Ms. Voiton, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Let's go to exhibit four, please. Mr. Sharing, I'm showing you a February 4th, 2017 letter from Ms. Voiton to you and scroll down for the signatures. Um, that is your signature at the at the bottom above signature and date, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Um, you accepted a job in a position of strategic partnerships executive 
at MES on February 4th, 2017, correct? Yeah. That's correct. Go to um, exhibit five, please. Exhibit five is a copy of your employment contract with the Maryland Environmental Service, correct? I guess. You can scroll uh, down so you can see the whole thing. Appears to be. That's your signature on page 10, correct? Uh, it appears to be. And your, uh, if you go back to paragraph two, your contract started on February fifteenth, twenty seventeen. Correct. Uh, yes. And the position of strategic partnerships executive was a new position created for you. Correct. Can you repeat the question, please? The position of strategic partnerships executive was a new position created for you, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. You did not interview with anyone other than Ms. Wooten for that position, did you? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Uh, I'm going to bring up exhibit six, please. Mr. Sharing, this is the Maryland Environmental Service Employee Handbook. As an employee at MES, did you ever review that handbook? Can you repeat the question, please? As an employee at MES, did you ever review the MES uh, Employee Handbook? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Uh, turn to the next page there and the application of the hiring process. Uh, Mr. Sharing, the, there was never a vacancy posted on MES's well, website or any other location for the position that you took at MES, was there? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. And the policy require, requires interviews to be conducted by a panel of MES staff, including the hiring supervisor and two other diverse qualified staff members. That you never had such an interview, did you? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. We go to the next, the personnel policy and procedure, please. Okay, scroll down to, uh, uh, well, Mr. McGrath, this is the MES personnel policies and procedures relating to hiring and employment. Have you ever reviewed that document before? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Okay. While you were at MES, uh, Mr. McGrath regularly went outside of the MES personnel policies to hire employees, didn't he? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Um, there was no written job description for strategic partnership executive, was there? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Okay. What were your duties as strategic partnership executive? Can you repeat the question, please? What were your duties as strategic partnership executive? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. When you were a strategic partnership executive at MES, who did you report to? 
On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Um, while you were a strategic partnership executive, there were no MES employees who reported to you, were there? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Let me go to uh, exhibit number seven, please. Mr. Shering, I'm showing you an October 7th, 2019 memo from Roy McGrath to direct reports and executive office staff. Uh, this memo documents a promotion for you at MES, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Okay. From the date October 7th, 2019 on, you were director of operations for the executive office at, at MES, correct? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? I, I, I lost you there for a few seconds. Sure. From October 7th, 2019 on until you're at the end of your tenure at MES, you were the director of operations for the executive office at MES, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. And you were the primary point of contact for employees of MES who wanted to be in contact with Mr. McGrath, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Were you ever advised by Mr. McGrath that he considered you untouchable and that you could not be fired even after he left the position of director? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Um, let me show you exhibit eight, please. Mr. McGrath, I'm Mr. Sharing, I apologize. I'm showing an August 20th, 2020 letter to, to you from Dr. Glass. That is the letter that terminated your employment at MES, correct? Oh, that's correct. Okay. So you're, uh, I think we've established, we can go back and look if you want. From your contract, you started on February 15th, 2017 and from this letter your employment ended on August 20th, 2020, correct? Oh, that's correct. Okay. So it's a little, a little over three and a half years. Um, now, um, I'm gonna show you, um, well, let me ask you this question. Did you know uh, Jim Harkins Can you repeat the question, please? Did you know Jim Harkins? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the decline to answer that question. Well, just for the record, you're aware that Mr. Harkins was director of MES for 11 years and he preceded your time at MES, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the decline to answer that question. Did you know, uh, you did know John O'Neill, correct? Can you read the question there? You did know John O'Neill, didn't you? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Uh, for the record, you're aware, aren't you, that John O'Neill was deputy director of MES for 12 years? Uh, on the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the decline to answer that question. Okay. So we have uh, reviewed a number of expense reports at MES for you, Roy McGrath, Jim Harkins, and John O'Neill 
while each was an employee at MES. And we've composed an exhibit that shows you the totals for uh, those expenses among you, Mr. McGrath, John O'Neill, and James Harkins. And I'm showing you exhibit number nine. I ask you to take whatever time you need to look at that document. Just for the record, it shows that Mr. McGrath, who worked there for three years and three months, had, uh, well, well, I'll explain the chart first. The blue part of the chart is MES credit card charges. And for a while you had an MES issued credit card, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the client to answer that question. Okay, and then the orange is reimbursed expenses paid for uh, by employees on their own credit cards or with cash uh, that were reimbursed by MES. Uh, and you had some expenses that were incurred that way and reimbursed, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Well, let's just review the numbers here. The total uh, expenses for Roy McGrath during three years and three months of service were $129,702.20. The total for you for three and a half years of service was $91,610.67. The total for John O'Neill with more than 11 years service as deputy director was $17,963.47. And the total for Jim Harkins with 11 years of service as director was $15,923.31. Can you explain why you had more than five times the amount of expenses in three and a half years as an employee at MES, as Mr. Harkins did as director in 11 years? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. I'm next going to show you exhibit number 10, which is a timeline of trips and events you attended while you were an employee at MES. And just scroll through it very, just give everybody like a minute to look at one page and then scroll through it. So you took your first trip uh, from April 11th to April 14th, 2017, within two months of being hired, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the clients answer that question. So the trips started in April of 2017 and the last one, March 15th, 2020, that was actually canceled because of COVID, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Okay. Uh, by my count, uh, which does not include that canceled trip, uh, there were 55, trips and events you attended during your three and a half years of employment at, at MES. Is that correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, 
I respectfully decline to answer that question. Mr. Sharing, I'm gonna ask you about some particular expense reimbursements that you received. And I'm, I'm gonna do it by category. You accompanied Mr. McGrath to a number of leadership conferences. The first one appears to have been to New York City from July 25th, 2017 to July 29th, 2017 to an entity called the Young Jewish Professionals Leadership Innovation and Diversity Symposium. Do you recall going to that? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. From the records that I've seen, MES employees had not previously attended Young Jewish Professional Leadership events. Are you aware of any others who did besides you and Mr. McGrath? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Um, the expense report which you uh, submitted for that event seeks reimbursement uh, in the amount of $371.50, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. You'll turn the page to the next one. Uh, for this particular trip, you flew to New York, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. You know whether Mr. McGrath flew to New York for this event? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. What did you do at the Young Jewish Professionals Conference, Mr. Sharing? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Let's go to exhibit 12, please. Exhibit 12, Mr. Sharing, is a copy of the Board of Directors minutes for their meeting of July 24th, 2017. And I'm going to ask uh, to scroll down to the last, second last paragraph of the director's report. This was the week of the young Jewish Professionals Conference and the minutes report that Mr. McGrath will be traveling to New York to speak at the Leadership Innovation and Diversity Symposium. He will be discussing sustainable green building projects. Have you seen these minutes before, Mr. Sharing? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. The minutes do not report that you attended the symposium, do they? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Do you recall Mr. McGrath giving a speech at the symposium? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. The records, your um, Expense reimbursement exhibit shows that you were there from July 25th to July 29th. Uh, Mr. McGrath didn't give a speech that lasted four days, did he? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Did Mr. McGrath 
tell you to go to the Young Jewish Professionals Conference? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Okay, let's bring up uh, exhibit 13, please. Mr. Sharing, I'm showing you an expense report submitted by you seeking reimbursement in the amount of $1,381.14, which was paid for, it was for attending the 2018 U.S. Chamber of Commerce IOM Midwest Institute. Uh, you went to that conference from June 3rd to June 7th of 2018, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. The uh, Institute, the IOM stands for Institute for Organizational Man Management, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question going to show you now exhibit number 14. This is informational material about the Institute for Organization Management. Have you seen this material before? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. And just to summarize it for the committee, the Institute for Organization Management uh, is a, it provides course instruction for uh, professional development, uh, correct? Is that, I'm, I'm sorry, is there a question to me? The Institute for Organization Management provides course instruction for professional development, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Um, you spent um, four days in Madison, Wisconsin at this event, correct? The advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully respectfully declines to answer that question. Uh, Mr. McGrath directed you to go to the uh, Chamber of Commerce event in Madison, Wisconsin, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. So from the records that I've seen, MES had not previously sent employees to IOM programs. Why did you and Mr. McGrath attend this one? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Let's go to number 15, please. Oh, no, let's go back to, go back to 14. Sorry. Scroll down to the, the uh, fee. <coughs> it's not in that one. I think it's at the end of uh, 16. Yeah, the end of 16. Okay. Go, go to 15. Mr. Sharing, the uh, Chamber of Commerce charges a fee for attending the Institution for Organization Management programs, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. 
And MES paid that fee for you and Mr. McGrath, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. <laughs> okay. If you'll scroll down to uh, Exhibit 15, the Maryland section, please. So Mr. McGrath graduated from the Institution for Organization Management in 2018, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. And Mr. Shering, when you graduate from the Institution for Organization Management, <laughs> you, got, you get to put the IOM designation after your name, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Go to the uh, 16, please. Thanks. Mr. McGrath, I'm showing you what's been marked as Exhibit 16, the Prospective Student Toolkit for Institution for Organization Management. Um, is this a document you've seen before? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. I'm going to ask to scroll down to page three. The reasons to attend. Stop there. This summarizes their view of the reasons for uh, you or Mr. McGrath to attend. The first bullet is you will receive instruction from and engage in discussion with leading industry experts who understand how to help you be successful in your career, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. It also says you will develop a network of peers throughout the country, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the decline to answer that question. Let's go to the uh, exhibit 17. These are the board minutes for MES dated July 23rd, 2018. And I want you to scroll down to the director's report. Uh, it states, Mr. McGrath has been invited to be a panelist at an executive level program conference sponsored by the Young Jewish Professionals Group in New York. Uh, you were aware of that at the time, correct, Mr. Shering? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. You accompanied Mr. McGrath on that trip, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Uh, please bring up exhibit uh, 18. Mr. Shering, Exhibit 18 is your expense report seeking reimbursement of $791.16 for uh, going to New York from July 25th to 26, 2018. And the purpose is stated representing MES at Young Jewish Professionals CEO Leadership and Innovation Symposium. You submitted that report, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. And who approved your uh, 
submission of this report. On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Uh, following the report are a number of receipts. I don't propose to go through them all, but uh, the first one is just for a lunch at Juniors where there are notes on it, uh, a business lunch with you and Mr. McGrath. Is that correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. And we scroll down, please. Who's, whose notes are these at the bottom about the per diem limit? Can you repeat the question, please. Whose notes are these at the bottom of the page about the per diem limit? Whose handwriting is it? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. And if you'll go back to the preceding page, you can see that the, despite the note about exceeding the per diem limit, the entire cost of the dinner is approved, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Um, in fact, that is something that happened regularly with your trips with Mr. McGrath, isn't it? That meals exceeded per diem limits, but were approved anyway? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. So we turn to the YJP and certain this. Back up one. Back one more. To the last, to the memo from the Mr. Sharing, who is Katie Tessier? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. In her email to you of September 16th, 2017, in response to your expense report, she uh, sends you a copy of the travel policy about per diem meal allowances, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Okay, now go to the YJP. Let's scroll to the page with McGrath. These are the Young Jewish Professional materials regarding the event, and it identifies Mr. McGrath, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Did Mr. McGrath describe himself as director, CEO, and chairman of Maryland Environmental Service? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Let's go to let's go to nineteen. Mr. McGrath, I'm showing you an expense report of yours, uh, which you signed on August 23rd, 2018, seeking reimbursement in the amount of $1,046.52. This was for an inaugural Environmental Business Leadership Conference in Annapolis. 
can you explain to the committee what that was? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Um, uh, how far is the MES office from Annapolis? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. You commuted on an almost daily basis from Washington, D.C. to the MAS offices to work, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. On your expense report for this event, you seek reimbursement for a hotel room you stayed in in Annapolis, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Okay, let's go to 20. Mr. Sharing, I'm going to show you Exhibit 20. Um, this report, signed by you September 14th, 2018 seeks reimbursement for $1,712.98 for an ASAE annual meeting and exposition in Chicago. Uh, you attended that from August 18th to August 21st of 2018, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. What is the ASAE? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Go to the last page. Mr. Sharing, I'm showing you uh, an ASAE annual meeting and exposition uh, statement about the conference uh, that more than 6,000 professionals and industry partners gathered in Chicago. Uh, and uh, for the conference, and it briefly describes what, what took place at the conference. You were one of the attendees, weren't you? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. And Mr. McGrath attended the conference with you, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Okay. So we're at 21. I'll show you exhibit number 21. Mr. Sharing, on uh, this expense report, which is uh, dated August 15, 2019, you seek reimbursement for expenses, again, related to uh, a U.S. Chamber of Commerce IOM conference in 2008, 2019, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. And this one, uh, Mr. McGrath also went to, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. And this event was in Conshohocken, Pennsylvania, is that correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Uh, you spent three nights there in a hotel, correct? 
on the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. And scroll to the page with the 1395 charge. MES, on your behalf, paid $1,395 for you to go to this event, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. So these uh, leadership conference events that we uh, reviewed, Mr. Sharing, uh, the Maryland Environmental Service didn't get any business from you and Mr. McGrath going to those conferences, did they? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. So you and Mr. McGrath also took some trips which arguably could be classified as potential business development. And I wanna show you uh, Exhibit 22, please. This is an expense reimbursement report of yours, which you signed on April 21st, 2017, uh, where you traveled to Belgium for the Sabelco trip. Do you recall that trip? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. And you sought reimbursement for $3,065.78? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. And were you exploring uh, Sodelco's uh, glass recycling facility. On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Uh, no uh, business resulted for Maryland Environmental Service as a re result of this trip, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Let's go to exhibit 23, please. Board of Directors minutes for April 27th, 2017. Mr. Sharing, I'm showing you the Board of Directors minutes for April 27th, 2017, after the Sidelco trip. And there's an entry under the director's report about it. You see that it reports, the director, Mr. McGrath, reports that he, Ms. Wooden, and Mr. Tom Zecchi recently traveled to Belgium and France for meetings with Sabelco. It doesn't mention that you went, but you did go, didn't you? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Do you know why Mr. McGrath would not report your presence on that trip to the board, along with the presence of Ms. Whiten and Mr. Mr. Tom Zecchi? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Okay, let's go to exhibit 24, please. Mr. McGrath, I'm showing you uh, a, Mr. Sharing. an expense, excuse me, Mr. Sharing, I apologize. I'm showing you exhibit 24, which is your expense reimbursement report dated December 23rd, 2019, in which you seek $6,149.36 in expense reimbursements. If you will turn the, uh, the page, the next page, please. Stop there. This 
expense report was ex was approved by Mr. McGrath, correct? The advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. The expense report includes reimbursement for a flight to Tel Aviv on November 16th and back on November 21st, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. So you spent five days in Israel and got reimbursed by MES, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. How many people from MES went on the trip besides you and Mr. McGrath? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Uh, what was your role on that trip? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Mr. McGrath told you to go on that trip, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Let me next show you uh, the MES policy on meal reimbursement, Exhibit 25. Have you seen this document before, Mr. Sharing? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. The uh, last entry on the policy, item I, says that requests for meal reimbursements had to be submitted to finance uh, with necessary documentation within the pay period when the expense was incurred. Uh, you regularly missed that deadline, but got reimbursed anyway, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. I'm next going to show you exhibit 26, which is the MES travel advance and expense reimbursement procedure. Are you familiar with that document, Mr. Sharing? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Uh, the last entry in this policy is that expense reports are due within five business days of the completion of travel. Uh, you regularly miss that deadline, but were reimbursed anyway, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. I'm going to show you exhibit 25, 27, please. Mr. Sharing, this is an expense reimbursement uh, report you submitted for a trip from February 6th to February 8th to Phoenix, representing MES at GreenBiz 18 conference, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. And Mr. McGrath also attended this event, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. I'm next going to show you exhibit 28, please. This is a, uh, an expense reimbursement submitted by you, signed October 29th, 2018, for representing MES 
at the Maryland Clean Energy Center Summit and Maryland Israel Water Conference in College Park, Maryland. And you seek reimbursement for $469.63, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Mr. McGrath also went to this conference, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. So if you go to the next page, you spent the night at the College Park Marriott, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the clients answer that question. And on the DC Metro, how long does it take to get from College Park back to your home in DC? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the clients answer that question. Let's go to exhibit 29, please. Let's go to 29. Mr. Mr. Sharing, I'm showing you an expense report you submitted on November 6, uh, 2018 uh, for travel reimbursement representing MES at Meta's uh, session in at Salisbury University. What is Meta? MEDA. On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Um, in any event, you, the, your report shows that you spent uh, the night of October 25th, 2018. at the Hyatt Regency in Cambridge for $182.43. And the very next expense report shows that you went to a meta conference on October 21st and 22nd, 2018 in Western Maryland and spent the night out there in a hotel in Cumberland, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respect the client to answer that question. And Mr. McGrath went on both of those trips, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respect the client to answer that question. Let's go to exhibit 30, please. Mr. Sharing, I'm showing you exhibit 30, which is an expense report submitted by you, uh, dated March 12th, 2019, where you seek reimbursement for $2,339.71. For, and the event is representing MES at Green Biz Conference in Arizona. Uh, what is the Green Biz Conference? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. On this trip, you spent three nights in a hotel uh, at $336.59 a night. Is that correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the client to answer that question. And we turn the page, the next page. Mr. McGrath also went on this trip, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the client to answer that question. Uh, you paid for Mr. McGrath's airline ticket, is that correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respect the client to answer that question. Let's 
Let's go to exhibit 31. Mr. Chair, I'm going to show you exhibit 31. Expense report dated October 14th, 2019, seeking reimbursement for $1,160.35. Uh, and this was for going to something called an ICSD conference in New York, correct? At Columbia University? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Okay. Uh, the event took place uh, in New York from, uh, from September 23rd to September 25th, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. And within this uh, package of reimbursement, if you look at the, uh, okay, this particular receipt, you seek reimbursement for staying on the night of October 1st, 2019 at the Residence Inn in Columbia, Maryland, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Why were you staying at the Residence Inn in Columbia? I'm sorry, you got cut off there a little bit. Why were you staying for the night at the Residence Inn in Columbia on October 1st, 2019? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Go back to the first page. And the, uh, stop there. The hotel charge for Columbia of $122.04 was included in your reimbursement submission, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the decline to answer that question. And if you look in the lower right hand corner of this page, it was, a, it was approved by Roy McGrath, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the decline to answer that question. Let's go to exhibit 32. I'm showing you exhibit 32, Mr. Sharing. This appears to be the syllabus for the, and, and course schedule for the ICSD event at Columbia University in New York. Um, did you attend any of the sessions on this agenda? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the clients answer that question. Go to exhibit 33, please. I'm showing you an expense report submitted on October 21st, 2019. Uh, if you look In the lower right hand corner of the report, it's approved by Mr. McGrath. But he has a note to put more description in, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the decline to answer that question. Uh, 
this expense report shows that you attended a Chamber of Commerce summit event in the District of Columbia on October 16th and 17th, 2019, and a Maryland Municipal League event at the Hyatt in Cambridge on October 13th through 15th, 2019. Do you recall doing that? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the client to answer that question. And Mr. McGrath attended those events too, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. I'm gonna show you exhibit 34, Mr. Shearing. This is a brief description of the uh, COC event in DC that your expense report seeks reimbursement for attending. It's a summit for small and growing businesses. Do you see that? I see it. I see it. Uh, can you explain why MES was sending uh, employees to a summit for small and growing businesses? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the decline to answer that question. I'm going to show you exhibit 35. Sir, this is a an expense report of yours submitted on uh, December 4th, 2019, seeking reimbursement in the amount of $3,826.90. And if you'll scroll down, it was approved by Mr. McGrath, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the decline to answer that question. So the first entry on the expense report is hotel for Mita fall conference. Correct. On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the client to answer that question. And if you go to the first receipt, for the Mita Fall Conference uh, on October 21st, 2019, or October 20th, 2019, you stayed at the Inn at Perry Cavern in St. Michael's, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I expect a decline to answer that question. And that cost $348.60 for a night. Is there a question? Yes. It cost, the end of Perry Cabin cost $348.60 for one night, right? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the client to answer that question. Okay, and if you'll go to the next receipt. Next one. And you and Mr. McGrath had dinner that that night at Limonella's in St. Michael's, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the client's answer that question. You also went to something called the Swana Waste Conference in uh, Arizona, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Okay. 
what is the Swana Waste Conference? On the advice of counsel, pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Okay, let's go to uh, 36, please. Mr. Sharing, I'm showing you exhibit 36, uh, May 15th or May 11th, 2020 expense report where you seek reimbursement for $4,734.70. This reimbursement report, which was approved by Mr. McGrath, seeks work reimbursement for attending a P3 conference in Dallas, Fort Worth. What is the P3 conference? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. It also seeks reimbursement for attending a global waste symposium in Indian Wells, California from February 23rd to 26, 2020. What is the global waste symposium? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Um, it also seeks reimbursement for a uh, rental car and shows that you drove to Palm Springs. Why did you drive to Palm Springs? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Now, I want you to scroll down to Ms. Tessier's email, please. Uh, I'm showing you a, an email dated May 11th, 2020 from Catherine Tessier, who's a senior fiscal associate at MES, um, asking Mr. Harris for uh, that for approval of certain expenses of, your, of yours that exceed the per diem. Uh, had you seen that document before? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. In any event, all, all of those were approved, correct? By Mr. Harris. On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. So go to 37, please. Mr. Sharing, this is the same expense report, but it, it, it includes information about the P3C public private conference in uh, Dallas, Fort Worth on March 2nd to March 4th, 2020. Uh, have you seen this uh, description of the conference before? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Can you explain why MES was paying for employees to go to this conference? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Let's go to exhibit 38, please. This again is the same expense report, but it has materials with it that describe the Responsible Business Summit in New York. Can you explain why MES was paying for its employees to go to the Responsible Business Summit in New York? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Let's 
Let's go to exhibit uh, 39, please. So, Mr. Sharing, this is an expense report submitted by you dated May 31st, 2017 to be reimbursed $898.74 for representing MES at Maryland event during recon. And you shows you went to Nevada from May 21st to the 23rd, 2017. Uh, what was that event? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Uh, did Mr. McGrath it, it direct you to go to that event? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. I want you to turn to the spree recon uh, pamphlet in this exhibit. So this is the pamphlet for the ICSC spree recon event in Las Vegas, which you attended. Uh, have you seen this document before, Mr. Sharing? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Um, can you explain why MES would be paying for its employees to go to this event? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Um, and then I'm going to ask you to turn to the next uh, expense report, please. This is your expense report for the same event the next year, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Let's go to exhibit 40, please. This is an expense report dated um, February 12th, 2019 that you submitted for reimbursement for $70 and 25 cents. And it's, uh, it's approved by Steve Pennington correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the client answer that question. Steve Pennington was uh, the person you reported to for a while at MES, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the client to answer that question. Mr. Pennington was hired after you were hired at MES, is that correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the client to answer that question. Was there a period of time when Mr. Pennington was your supervisor that Mr. McGrath did not talk to you? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the client to answer that question. Uh, was there a period of time when Mr. McGrath was angry with you? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Okay, the receipt that accompanies this expense report is for a dinner at Old Epic Grill in DC. Are you familiar with that restaurant? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I decline to answer that question. Okay. And the dinner was uh, just you and Mr. McGrath, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. And despite the fact that it exceeded their per diem allowance, it was approved, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Let's go to exhibit 41, please.
this is an expense report submitted by you. Uh, again, approved by Steve Pennington. It's for $176.99. Uh, and this was for more um, meals with Mr. McGrath, correct? On the advice of counsel, I'm pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. I want to show you exhibit uh, 42. We have reviewed the records and uh, compiled this timeline of conferences, which you attended. Uh, and unless otherwise noted, Mr. McGrath also attended these. The green ones are international trips. The blue ones are Maryland based events. The gray ones are subject matter events outside of Maryland. The yellow are leadership and the red are just other like ICSC. From April of 2017 until March of 2020, uh, you attended 24 such events correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the decline to answer that question. And uh, all but one of them, the last event, Mr. McGrath also attended, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Okay, let's go to exhibit 43, please. This is another expense report of yours, Mr. Sharing. Um, it's for a total amount of $14,970. And the first entry I want to ask you about is the GWBOT midwinter event. What is GWBOT? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. If you turn the next page, there's a ticket to an event on February 27, 2020. Uh, did you attend that event? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Okay. The next um, is an invoice dated May, well, excuse me, dated May uh, 21st, 2020, from the Harvard Kennedy School in the amount of $14,475. Did you pay that invoice? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. So just at the top of the invoice, it's bill to Roy McGrath, PO box 476 Edgewater, Maryland 21037. Did Mr. McGrath give you this invoice? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Uh, did Mr. McGrath tell you that he was attending the Harvard Kennedy School Executive ed Education course? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Um, did you pay this invoice on behalf of Mr. McGrath? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Well, Mr. Shearing, you uh, requested that MES reimburse you for this invoice. Doesn't that mean you paid it? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question.
if you can turn to the ex expense report, please. That's okay, right there. This is the expense report submitted by you on June 4th, 2020, which includes both the GWBOT event and something called training registration in January for April program delayed due to COVID to June uh, in the amount of $14,475. That's the Harvard tuition, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. And if you look down at the uh, approval entry, Mr. McGrath approved this expense, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Mr. McGrath approved you spending $14,475 for him to attend Harvard, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the client to answer that question. Now, the Harvard, well, move on to the, to the transaction details, please. Mr. Sharing, this is the receipt you submitted uh, proving that you paid the Harvard invoice, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respect the client to answer that question. The Harvard course, in fact, took place in June after McGrath had left MES, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respect the client to answer that question. Have you ever discussed with Mr. McGrath whether he attended the course or not? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. The, uh, your expense report was approved and you were reimbursed for the Harvard tuition, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Has Mr. McGrath ever shown you a diploma or any certificate he got from the Harvard School? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Okay, let's, uh, let's show exhibit 44. Uh, this is a letter from the Harvard Kennedy School. It's exhibit 44. Uh, and it confirms the participation of Mr. McGrath on the program in the program from May 31st to June 26, 2020. And the fact that he was granted a certificate of completion for his matriculation. Uh, did he ever show you that certificate of completion? On the advice of counsel and pursuant so my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. So when did Mr. McGrath tell you that he was leaving MES to be the governor's chief of staff? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. During the months of uh, March, April, and May, Mr. McGrath was working on uh, matters directly for the governor, including the COVID epidemic, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Did Mr. McGrath uh, tell you uh, anything about his role in procuring masks uh, on behalf of the state of Maryland? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. 
When was the last day that you went to the office at MES? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Okay. Let's uh, show Mr. Sharing Exhibit 45, please. Mr. Sharing, these are the Board of Directors minutes of May 28th, 2020. Uh, and you attended that meeting, correct? You're listed as others present. You attended by phone. On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. So if you'll turn to the director's report, please. You see in the last paragraph of the director's report, it states Mr. McGrath announced he has accepted a position of chief of staff for the state of Maryland in the office of the governor and will start his new role on Monday, June 1st. You were there for that announcement, weren't you? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. You knew he was going to be chief of staff before he announced it at that director's meeting, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the client's answer that question. Did he tell you at any time that he expected a year's salary as severance from MES? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the client's answer that question. Did he tell you that the governor had approved his receiving a year's salary a severance from MES. On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. The uh, turn to the closed session, please. The board on May 28, 2020 went into closed session to discuss compensation of employees. You see that from the minutes? And you were not in attendance at the closed session, were you? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Um, you know who Pam Fuller is, an employee of MES, don't you? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Um, Pam Fuller is a paralegal at MES who helps prepare board minutes, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Um, let me show you exhibit 46, please. Mr. Sharing, these are a series of emails between you and Ms. Fuller. Uh, it starts on uh, June 16th, 2020. With an email from you to Ms. Fuller. You were asking uh, Ms. Fuller to share the board minutes, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Well, the reason you were doing that was because you wanted to share them with Mr. McGrath and jointly edit the board minutes, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. So let's go to Ms. Fuller's response. She responds to you that Beth, who's Beth Wooden, and Sean, who's Sean Coleman, counsel to MES, have already reviewed the minutes. And she says, if you have any corrections, just let me know and she'll fix them on her copy, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. 
Let's go to your response. Uh, you say it's much easier to process, uh, much easier to edit the Word version and ask her to share the Word document, right? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Uh, you wanted to share the Word document, which she did. So that you could forward it to Mr. McGrath and jointly edit it. Correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. And you go on to say, ask her to share it via OneDrive because you didn't have access to the K drive, right? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the client to answer that question. Well, you did share the minutes with Mr. McGrath, correct? These are text messages between you and Mr. McGrath, aren't they? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respect the client to answer that question. So stop there. You say to Mr. McGrath, we're preparing for the board meeting 625, would you like to review the board meeting minutes from May? And Mr. McGrath replies, yes, offline. What does offline mean? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. How did you share the minutes with Mr. McGrath? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Okay, let's go to his email to Pam. This is an email from you to Ms. Fuller dated June 27, 2020, with edits to the board minutes, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. You and Mr. McGrath had conferred on edits to the board minutes, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. And will you scroll down to the closed session, please? So you and Mr. McGrath edited the closed session, which neither one of you attended, except Mr. McGrath attended the first part of it, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Next one. And The uh, Mr. Coleman largely rejected your edits, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. After Mr. McGrath uh, left MES, did you stay in contact with him by phone, uh, email, and text? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. I'm going to show you exhibit 47. This is a series of text messages between you and Mr. McGrath, isn't it? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Scroll down to the end where it... One of the things you and uh, Mr. McGrath discuss in this series of communications is the organization chart at MES, right? 
on the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Okay. And the communication that says would remove CEO and COO references going forward, that was an exception that came from Mr. McGrath, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Um, I want to go to August of 2020 and exhibit number 50, please. Dan Farrow is the communications director at uh, MES, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. He reported to you uh, during August of 2020, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. The first thing I'm showing you is a communication from Mr. Farrow to you that he got a voicemail from a reporter at the Sun asking about Roy's compensation agreement. That was on August 12, 2020 at 4.18 p.m., correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Um, go to the next one. Next on... Uh, the same day over August 12th, Mr. Farrow forwarded to you an email from the Sun Paper reporter, uh, Pamela Wood, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Now, uh, at 1058 p.m., Mr. Farrow emails to you Matthew understood from our conversation and your follow-up voicemail, no response for now, would suggest notifying counsel. You and Mr. Farrow had a conversation about this contact from the Sun, right? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. You told Mr. Farrow not to respond not to tell Dr. Glass and not to tell Sean Coleman, counsel for MES, did you? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the client's answer that question. So on August 14th, this article, which is part of the same exhibit, it's part of exhibit uh, 48, appeared in the Baltimore Sun. Do you recall that? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the client to answer that question. Okay. Uh, after that article appeared, you and Mr. McGrath began repair, preparing responses to it, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the client answer that question. I'm showing you now an email from Dan Farrow uh, to David Nevins. Can you identify David Nevins? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Well, on August 14th, 2020, Mr. Farrow informs Mr. Nevins, who was a public, runs a public relations firm and had a contract with MES, that he just got off the phone with Matthew, who spoke to Roy. They now want to go on the offensive and issue a press release tonight. At this time, it's Friday, August 14th, 6.16 p.m. 
they are sending over some language they want to include it. Please call me on my cell when you get a chance to get this. Thank you. So you and Mr. McGrath were working on language for a press report which went on the offensive about the Sun article, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. So on August 14th at 6.42, Mr. Farrow forwards to Dr. Glass a draft from Roy slash Matthew. Uh, you provided Mr. Farrow with that draft, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Um, on the same night at 7.01, Mr. Farrow provides to Mr. Nevins some talking points from Roy. Uh, Mr. McGrath actually called Mr. Farrow while he was in his car and dictated talking points to him, didn't he? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the clients answer that question. Eventually, uh, Dr. Glass uh, took charge of issuing, of composing the press release from MES. Is that correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. So go to exhibit 49, please. Mr. Sharing, Exhibit 49 is an op-ed piece authored by Mr. McGrath, which appeared in the Sun on August 21st, 2020. Did you read that article? Uh, on the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Did you assist Mr. McGrath in composing that article? On the advice of counsel and pursuance to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Um, the article does not mention that the governor approved his severance package, does it? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. So you had a number of communications during this period of time when the Sun articles were uh, being published about McGrath's severance. You had a number of communications with Mr. McGrath himself, correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Did Mr. McGrath ever say to you in August of 2020 that the governor approved his severance package? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Did Mr. McGrath ever say to you at any time that the governor or governor's office approved his severance package. On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. So please go to exhibit 50. Mr. Sharing, this is a press release from the governor's office. Um, have you seen this document before? 
On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. The second paragraph of this um, release says, it's a quote, to be clear, I did not approve, recommend, or have any involvement whatsoever in any of the decisions made by the board of directors of MES with respect to the former director, Roy McGrath, or any other individual. Do you know whether that statement is true or not? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Did you and Mr. McGrath ever discuss this release? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Have you continued to communicate with Mr. McGrath since August of 2020? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Mr. Sharing, during your three and a half years at MES, the service paid for you to go to a number of leadership or professional conferences with Mr. McGrath. Did you receive any professional or educational designations for attending those conferences? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Mr. Sharing, um, Exhibit 9, the comparison of expenses uh, of you, Mr. McGrath, Mr. O'Neill, and Mr. Harkins uh, shows your total expenses for three and a half years were $91,610.67. Exhibit 10 shows that you attended 55 uh, events or trips during your three and a half years at MES. And with respect to questions about your 55 MES sponsored trips and MES's reimbursement of expenses for them, and your total reimbursement of expenses in the amount of $91,610.61. Your explanation to this committee is that you declined to answer about those trips and expenses because of the answers may tend to incriminate you. Is that correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respect the client to answer that question. And you, in fact, have invoked that right 136 times in this hearing, which has gone on less than two and a half hours. Is that correct? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respect the client to answer that question. I yield back to the co-chairs, sir. Um, Thank you, uh, Mr. Coe, for uh, your work and your questioning. Um, we'll proceed to questions from the committee at this point. Um, let me turn it over to my co-chairman, um, Delegate Barron, for his questions. Excuse me, Delegate Barron. This is Mr. Irwin, I've been silent 
And uh, could we take a quick break before you start your questions? Just a quick. Um, sure. How long do you need? Two minutes. Okay. We'll take a two minute break. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for both of you. <laughs> Thank you. No Mr. Coe is back. I think we can go ahead and proceed. Chairman Barron. Thank you, Chairman Lamb. Um, I think council was pretty thorough, but I'm, I'm sure that Members have a few questions. Um, I'll get us kick kick us off. Um, Mr. Sharing, where do you live? Uh, in Washington D.C., Delia Brown. What's your address? Uh, Twenty-one twenty-five Fourteenth Street Northwest, Washington D.C.
And did you live there in 2014? Yes. So council uh, asked a question sometime earlier, uh, sometime when we started about uh, political contributions in 2014. I'm just gonna ask you again, did you make any political contributions, campaign contributions to the governor in 2014? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. So I'm looking at um, public records here, uh, the Maryland Campaign Finance website, and has you down for two contributions in 2014 to the Hogan Rutherford Committee to Change Maryland. One for a thousand in July of 2014, and another for 50 in October of 2014. Those are your contributions to the Hogan Rutherford campaign, right? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the decline to answer that question. And there are various other uh, uh, records on the Maryland campaign finance website that notes your political contributions, has your name, Matthew Shearing, has the address that you just uh, noted, uh, and two of them even have your uh, employment with the Maryland Environmental Service. So for example, in 2017, two contributions, one for $250 and another for $1,000. Those are you, your contributions, right? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. You were also asked about um, your state employment, your employment with the Maryland Environmental Service. You, you were employed there, right? That's correct. And what positions did you have there again? Uh, on the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. You can't tell us what positions you had at the Maryland Environmental Service. Uh, can you tell us, and I think, I think you declined to answer this, but I just want to be sure. Can you tell us who your direct report was? Who did you report to? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question can't tell us that you reported to Mr. McGrath. Well, you reported to Mr. McGrath even after he was no longer director of the MES. Isn't that right? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respect the decline to answer that question. Counsel also asked you about um, statements by Mr. McGrath and statements by uh, the governor related to the severance, the so-called severance or severance package. And he read a statement uh, from the governor from August 25th of this year. And I'll read it again where the governor says, to be clear, I did not approve, recommend, or have any involvement whatsoever in any of these decisions made by the board of directors of MES with respect to the former director, Roy McGrath, or any other individual. Were you aware of that statement? Do you re recall that statement? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully declined to answer that question. You declined to even tell us if you were aware of that statement or are aware of that statement. And the statement, there was a response from Mr. McGrath the next day, August 26th of this year. The statement yesterday, he's referring to the governor's statement that I just read. The statement yesterday is being misinterpreted. Can you please say something about us discussing severance that, that is, it was okay for me to handle with MES only what we agreed 
without your support, it looks like I misled MES. I did not. Did you ever become aware of that statement? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Is Mr. McGrath's statement true? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Governor's statement true? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Okay, outside of this, the severance issue, which I've asked you about, counsel has asked you about uh, 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 you, your being aware of conversations um, with the governor and, and Mr. McGrath or, or whether McGrath has made statements to you about the severance. Were you ever privy to any conversations whether they were regarding the severance or something beyond the severance, were you privy to any conversations between the governor and Mr. McGrath? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. When Mr. McGrath left and he was chief of staff, and then I think somewhere around June of this year, or June 27th of this year, and council asked you about, about this issue of the, the board minutes and you getting the board minutes for Mr. McGrath so that you all could make some edits to the board minutes. This was an effort to This was an effort to kind of hide what happened with the severance and how it was approved. Isn't that right? On the advice of the council and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. While you were working at MES, um, did you do any work for the state outside of uh, uh, your duties with the with with MES. Did you have any other duties related to the state? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the client to answer that question. So what I'm getting at, this is not related to uh, uh, the, the severance, but I, counsel asked about um, or referred to Grath was, uh, I think in early March, he was um, appointed to the governor's response, COVID response team. Were you aware of that? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Did you assist Mr. McGrath in his duties as a member of the COVID response team? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respect the clients answer that question. Some of Mr. McGrath's duties on the, as a member of the COVID response team had to do with Operation Enduring Freedom. Are you familiar with Operation Enduring Freedom or Enduring Friendship, excuse me? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respect the clients answer that question. In addition to being a director of, of MES and a member of the response team, um, uh, apparently Mr. McGrath, according to the governor, uh, spearheaded, quote, spearheaded our efforts with respect to Operation Enduring Friendship. Were you aware of that? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respect the client answer that question. Did you help Mr. McGrath in his spearheading of Operation Enduring Friendship? On the advice of counsel and pursuance of my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Right. Mr. Co-Chair, if we could uh, move to uh, another member for questions, I may have some 
when we circle back around. I did want to have one follow-up question to that last line of questioning and then pass it on to other members of the committee as well. We also have come across the fact that the governor did at a prior press conference cite the fact that Mr. McGrath had been involved and uh, in the procurement of these South Korean tests and actually publicly thanked him for that at the press conference. Do you have any awareness, Mr. Sharing, of his involvement and to what extent Mr. McGrath was involved in, these procurement, in the procurement of these South Korean tests? On the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respectfully decline to answer that question. Okay. Uh, I'll turn it over to other members of the committee for questions. Other members of the committee, either raise your hand or uh, raise your hand in the chat. Delegate Carter came on. Do you have any? There we go. All right. Delegate Carter. Or sorry, Senator Carter, <laughs> your earlier picture in front of the on the House floor confused me for a second. Go ahead, Senator Carter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Shearing, I have just one question. You testified earlier that you worked for the Department of Housing and Community Development from 2015 to 2017. In fact, you testified that your title, your job title, was special assistant to the deputy director of multifamily housing and neighborhood business works, correct? That's correct. What was your salary at that job? Um, that was 75,000 when I started. Thank you, Did, were you raised while you were there for, in two years? I'm sorry, sorry, what was the first part of that question? Mm -hmm. You started at 75,000. You, did you receive a raise while you were there over the two year period? Uh, I did. So what was your salary at the time that you ended? From memory, I think it was 85,000. Thank you, that's it. Thank you, Senator Carter. Um, questions from other members of the committee? Chairman Barron, do you see any other hands? I don't. I think uh, Delegate Corman had to step away. Um, I don't see any hands. Okay. If I could follow, I think, look like I, I may have missed. Um, you were being asked about salary. What was you, uh, Mr. Sharing? What was your salary at MES? I may have missed that. Uh, 95,000. When I, when I began. What, what was, what was your final salary? Um, I think it was approximately, I want to say 119,000, so at some point you got a, a raise or was this like an automatic, were these automatic bumps or how, how did you go from one to the other? Um, uh, yes, raise. Who gave you the raise? Uh, on the advice of counsel and pursuant to my constitutional rights, I respect the decline to answer that question. I think that's all I have, Chairman, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. I think I uh, will decline to ask any further questions as well. We've just become clear that Mr. Shearing probably will not answer any of them. So I think we can proceed in the agenda and we've come to the chair's closing remarks. Uh, Chairman Barron, do you wanna go first? Sure, thank you. I'll, I'll be brief. Um, Today, we had a high level, politically connected, former state employee that won't answer questions. 
um, won't answer very basic questions in the face of a lot of evidence. Um, in fact, he won't even say how he got the position as a state employee or who he reported to as a state employee or even who gave him a raise. Um, and yet we've seen as presented uh, by our council, um, Mr. Shearing and Mr. McGrath took great advantage of their state employment, perhaps wasteful and fraudulent advantage of their state employment, of their taxpayer funded positions. Um, I'm reminded, Mr. Chair, of uh, 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 one of our prior hearings where we had a text message, a series of text messages between Mr. McGrath and the, the now current uh, director of MES, where he says, welcome to the big leagues. And throughout the course of this hearings, it appears that Mr. Sharing was a part of that, a part of what at least Mr. McGrath's definition of the big leagues. Um, we still aren't clear on, um, you know, who this discrepancy uh, between what the governor says and knew about the severance package versus what Mr. McGrath said and knew. Um, you know, I expect that we'll continue to pursue that um, we have a, a lot more information about um, the expenses and reimbursements. And if you look at the, uh, or recall exhibit nine, I believe it is, it, it, it describes uh, visually very well um, how much uh, Mr. Shearing and Mr. McGrath as state employees took advantage of their positions. Um, to the detriment of taxpayers. So I, I'll leave it there. I, I, um, I expect that we'll continue to pursue uh, the answers to questions that we, we have yet to, uh, to find out. Um, and I'll, I'll leave it there and defer to you, Senator Lamb. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Barron. Um, I echo your disappointment with the lack of candor that's coming before the committee on this very important issue. Um, it's clear that uh, Mr. Sharing, unfortunately, has declined to answer even the most basic questions that were presented to him by this committee, um, refusing to answer on even the most basic facts. And uh, you know, I think that in itself speaks volumes um, to the fact that Mr. Sharing has invoked the Fifth Amendment over a hundred times I think uh, points to grave concerns that this committee has that still go unanswered. The expenses that Mr. Coe pointed out at the beginning are troubling. When you add up the fact that the reimbursements and credit card expenditures totaled over $91,000, that Mr. Sharon could not answer almost any of the questions related to them. And at least from the perspective of this, of, at least from my perspective, and potentially from folks that I have heard of from, and as well as constituents, that it's become clear that Mr. McGrath used Maryland Environmental Services as a slush fund to pay for many expenses of which the justification he could not answer. And I'm disappointed by Mr. Shering's inability to answer and justify these expenses, even the most basic questions about the trips and it leads us to assume that there was something untoward or inappropriate about these expenses. Unfortunately, these responses or lack of responses from Mr. Sharing speak for themselves. I'm disappointed because of the tremendous uh, expense that was, um, uh, the tremendous expense to Maryland Environmental Services while we are as a state in very troubling and challenging financial times where I hear from constituents who are losing their homes because they're not even receiving a small unemployment benefit from the state. And how do we go back to our constituents and justify that reimbursements were paid 
to Mr. Sharing here over 61,000 and to Mr. McGrath at over $125,000. I am disappointed. Um, you know, I think this is uh, deeply troubling. And I think whether your expenses, Mr. Sharing, are in accordance with the law or up to others to decide, but in the court of public opinion, you and Mr. McGrath represent everything that's wrong with state government. And it's really a breach of trust, whether it's these types of expenses out of Maryland Environmental Services, the costs that went into the South Korean tests, or the state contracts that went to procure PPE. This seems to continue a line of concern with expenditures out of this administration that's deeply troubling. And so this is very disappointing. We know that the truth will come out and we want to get to the bottom of this very serious matter concerning, concerning the quarter million dollar severance. Unfortunately, the answers today have not been very forthcoming and we will continue this line of examination investigation with further hearings um, and the next one will take place next week. Let me turn it over and I think that's it then. If there are no other comments from um, my co-chair, uh, we will go ahead and adjourn this meeting. We will reconvene next week on Wednesday, December 16th at 1 p.m. and expect that Mr. McGrath will appear before this committee then. Thank you.